In this video, I want to explain how we test what the order of integration is for a given variable. So let's speak about a particular series, xt, and then if we draw a plot of xt against time, perhaps our series looks something like this, whereby it looks on first glances like it might be a highly persistent time series, perhaps some sort of random walk. But to be sure, what we need to do then is we take our variable and we maybe do some sort of Dickey-Fuller test on it. Perhaps we do an associated Dickey-Fuller test if there's serial correlation in our error of our particular Dickey-Fuller test. And then we examine the results of our Dickey-Fuller test in the circumstance where we reject the null. So remember that the null hypothesis of a Dickey-Fuller test is that you have a non-stationary time series. In this circumstance, you would then conclude quite rightly that your process was integrated of order zero. Although that would be a little bit odd if your, if your variable looked like this and then you concluded that it was integrated of order zero, perhaps it would look quite different to that in the circumstance where you did actually reject the null hypothesis of a Dickey-Fuller test. Okay, what happens if you do not reject the null? So you're concluding that you have some sort of unit root you have a non-stationary time series. So then at this stage, you can quite rightly assume that your process is integrated of order k, where in this circumstance, k is an integer, which is greater than zero. Okay, so what do you do then? Well, the idea now is what you do is you take the first difference of your time series. So you take the first difference of xt, and then what you should always do, as I always stress in econometrics, is you should draw a plot of that particular series. So now we're drawing a plot of the change in xt against time. And if your series now looks something like this, then that's probably a reasonable sign that you actually have a process which in first differences is actually a stationary time series. So from this, you might be tempted to then conclude that your process was integrated of order one because the first difference of the process is actually stationary. To be absolutely clear, what we should really do is we should do some sort of Dickey-Fuller test or associated Dickey-Fuller test. And then if we reject the null, we then conclude that our process is integrated of order one. In the strange circumstance where, because this doesn't happen that often, if you look at a variable and you would, and then you look at its first differences across time and it still looks like the variable is doing some sort of random walk, so it's doing something like this, it still looks like it's a non-stationary time series and following that up, you then do some sort of Dickey-Fuller test on it from which you do not reject the null. In those circumstances, you will then have a process which is integrated of order two or above it will be integrated of order two if when you take the first difference of the first differences, so now we're taking the difference of the first differences, if that variable itself is now stationary. It will be integrated of higher order if this particular difference term here itself is still non-stationary. But to be honest, it's very rare that you get processes which are integrated of order um, for a number which is higher than two. Typically, prices integrated of order two, things like GDP, um, another example might be interest rates, they're integrated of order one, and there are a whole range of processes which are integrated of order zero.